Hey, it's Anna. I am looking down at a rather large collection of honey mushrooms. The uh, Latin name for this is the Armillaria malia group. This is an exceptionally common uh, kind of mushroom and fungus. It is a parasite and very invasive. So one of the uh, you know favorite factoids people have about mycology when people are talking about how it's an underestimated field is that uh, one of the largest organisms on earth is a fungus. Now the truth of the matter is that's true. It's a fungus, uh, a honey fungus that covers about 2,400 acres in Oregon. So on the one hand, yes, very impressive. On the other hand, it is, uh, I think, a testament to how uh, virulent and problematic uh, honey fungus can be for the habitats that they inhabit. That being said, they are a resident part of the landscape and you will find them everywhere. Uh, so, you know, it's just a good idea to keep an eye on them if you see them on your property to be aware of the fact that you do have uh, an invasive species that can be quite problematic for your trees and plants. Um, as far as edibility is concerned, people do uh, eat honey mushrooms. Some folks do have adverse reactions to them. I have a good friend in Oregon who ate some uh, honey mushrooms in the Armillaria malia group and had some significant belly trouble for a couple of weeks. And so ever since then, I've been very, uh, you know, cautious around honey mushrooms of any description. That's inclusive of the very common uh, ringless honey mushroom, Armillaria tabescens. Uh, that said, you know, with uh, preparations, uh, people do recommend that you uh, parboil these mushrooms and then cook them. Um, and at any rate, you know, it's just something to be aware of. It doesn't seem to be an incredibly widespread problem. Uh, it's kind of like the chicken of the woods issue where some people are uh, reactive to it, uh, you know, and, and have um, adverse reactions to eating the mushroom, but generally people do not. So it's considered an edible, but edible with caution. Okay, so um, identification features. This is a pretty simple and straightforward mushroom to identify. There are some look-alikes. Uh, in particular, we have uh, gymnopolis mushrooms and also jack-o'-lantern mushrooms, omphalatus mushrooms, that have uh, sort of a similar uh, growth pattern, which is this clustering behavior. Um, so, you know, your main distinguishing features here, however, are, uh, of course, you know, the color of the mushrooms. They get their common name, honey fungus, uh, from, you know, this, um, coloration and uh, I'm gonna wait for that dump truck all right off he goes uh, this is one of my favorite mushroom patches but it's right next to a bunch of construction so it's one of the most um, like unpeaceful experiences mushroom hunting but um, nonetheless there's a lot of great shit here so you know you got to take the bad with the good I suppose all right so back to identifying honey mushrooms you have um, you know, a really often very lovely uh, sort of honey color. So the flavor is not honey, it is, is the color, is the, um, the reference there, the reference point for the common name. They are often darker than this and, you know, uh, range into brown, especially as they age and the mushrooms open. But these are really kind of iconic um, for, you know, the species group. So you have this, uh, you know, lovely sort of honey color. It oftentimes becomes darker in the center. Another uh, characteristic that you will see is kind of a fibrous surface. So there are these little uh, fibers, it's slightly hairy. Uh, that being said, it's not like dry. Some uh, honey mushrooms are actually kind of sticky, uh, but you do have a finely fibrous layer um, on, on the cap. The stems of the mushrooms are really uh, sort of robust. They are oftentimes like mildly hollow, but they're very, very fibrous. And as you strip them apart, they really, um, you know, they're easy to strip vertically, but not so easy to snap. Uh, and so unlike a lot of mushrooms that you can just easily mangle with the slightest bit of effort, honey mushrooms do take a little bit of uh, peeling and snapping. And they, they do make a kind of vegetably, like almost um, dried out celery noise when you snap them. So anyway, that's what it makes me think of. Uh, you do see them in these large clusters typically. Um, you'll see them a, a lot of the year. You know, we oftentimes see a lot of honey mushrooms in the late uh, summer and early fall. Um, so, you know, the clustering behavior is distinct. These little fibers are distinct on the top. Um, you also have a ring on the stem uh, that is very distinctive. So as the honey mushroom matures, you have a, basically a protective layer of tissue. I'll find one right here. So this is the partial veil. It's just like, um, you know, a protective layer of tissue that covers the mushroom. As the mushroom matures, that pops off and pops open. 
and you end up with a beautiful and very uh, sort of symmetrical ring on the stem. So a lot of rings that you get, they're a little bit chaotic. Sometimes they're just like a little splash of um, tissue. But in the case of honey mushrooms, it's very uh, distinct and uh, mildly felty. You do have a couple of layers here. Um, also, uh, as far as gills, you know, as the mushrooms are young, they're, they're quite pale gills, um, usually attached to the stem and sometimes mildly decurrent, meaning sometimes you'll see, um, you know, the uh, gills start to run down the stem a little bit. I actually don't have uh, a mushroom here that shows that characteristic. So, you know, in this case, like it's just attached directly to the stem. There's no like little gap there. Um, pale gills to begin with, but they do turn brown um, as the mushroom matures and kind of gets a little bit splotchy. These are really fresh and so it's a little bit difficult to demonstrate that, but basically they start looking like messed up brown uh, yellow flowers with these sort of brownish dark uh, gills underneath. So um, the other thing to consider when it comes to the stems is you often will see uh, a gradient in coloration so it's lighter toward the top and at the base it is uh, darker um, you know that that's usually pretty consistent another uh, feature of the stem that i really like and is also uh, fairly consistent is you have uh, sort of a, a streaking and growth zones uh, sort of uh, stretch mark behavior that you can see right here it can be relatively subtle but if you're looking at the mushroom closely you'll see just basically it looks like um, as the mushroom matured that there are these uh, you know little layers on the top that got uh, stretched apart so uh, that is the armillaria malia group again you know if you're interested in eating them there's a lot of really good guidance about how to do that safely what to watch out for um, I just personally like them because they're so numerous and I love their, um, you know, colors, but also that a uh, sort of pristine ring on the stem really uh, does it for me because I just love a consistent felty ring on things. It just has this sort of, you know, uh, neat consistency that mushrooms usually lack. So um, that's your Armillaria malias. You're going to find them everywhere. Hopefully they don't eat your trees.